I heard an old story. Thank you for tuning in to the television ministry of Clay's Mill Baptist Church. Join us as we share our passion for soul winning, spiritual growth, and revival in our state and nation. And now, Pastor Jeff Fugit. Well, good evening and welcome to the program tonight. It is a joy to be back with you on the program each week. I have spent uh, the summer with my wife and staff out at the Circle C Baptist Ranch, and uh, we're just now getting back to recording our weekly programs, and it is a joy to be with you, and I appreciate you watching. Why don't you take the time now to text or call a friend and tell them Brother Fugit and his family are on television, and uh, you'll enjoy the program. If you're watching by way of television on WLJC, we're glad you are. If you're watching by way of Facebook, our program this evening, we would ask that you would share share the program so that we can multiply the opportunity of the program being seen by folks around the country and we appreciate you doing that. We've come to the uh, end of our summer uh, schedule uh, here at our church and uh, we are ready uh, for schools to start on this Monday morning and uh, the Christian Academy grades K through 12 will open at 8.30 Monday morning and we look forward to welcoming our students, a record number of students and we're here at our new property uh, here on Brannan Road. And then the college dormitories open out on Versailles Road, uh, Commonwealth Baptist College for our college students uh, that are preparing for a life of ministry and service there. And we're really looking forward to the college year uh, here at Commonwealth Baptist College. And our students, uh, they will uh, start arriving on uh, Sunday and Monday. And we'll have our student orientation this coming uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. And then on Thursday and Friday, they will be a part of a conference I'd like to invite you to. If you like old-fashioned preaching and singing, and you would like to be a part of the Passing the Mantle Conference, we'd love to invite you to that conference that will be held on the grounds of the Circle C Baptist Ranch, Lancaster, Kentucky. It's actually in Buckeye, about seven miles from downtown Lancaster. It is a beautiful 117-acre ranch there, and right in the middle of that is a brand-new, beautiful tabernacle that we enjoyed being uh, under uh, this uh, summer, and we had some wonderful, some spectacular services, and I'd love for you to come and see the camp. I'd love for you to come to the conference. It won't cost you anything to attend and just come show up. The services will begin Thursday morning at 9 a.m., Thursday evening at 7 p.m., and then again Friday morning at 9 a.m. The purpose of the conference is to encourage another generation to serve the Lord. Uh, you know, as Elijah passed off the scene, his mantle fell to the earth as he was escorted to heaven in the chariot of fire, and uh, Elisha picked up that mantle. And, uh, you know, as he came back across the brook, he took the mantle and he smote the water and he said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And, of course, the waters parted. And it was a picture of that mantle being passed from one generation to the next. It's our heart's desire to rear and to raise and to train another generation of young people to serve the Lord. There will be hundreds of young people that will be there from the schools and the college, but you will enjoy being there no matter your age. Bring your family, and if you want to come early for the meal on Thursday evening, you can purchase a meal at a reasonable price, and that will be served, I believe it is at 6.15, and then the evening service at 7 o'clock. Now, this, this coming Thursday, Friday, that is August 24 and August 25, and that is at the Circle C Baptist Ranch. It's a Passing the Mantle Conference. Then let me tell you where I'll be preaching the next few weeks and if you live in those regions uh, I would invite you to come and be a part of those meetings. I'll be at the Chesapeake Baptist Church in Chesapeake, Virginia on September 4th and 5th. 
The next week, I will be at the Open Door Baptist Church in Macomb, Mississippi. Macomb, Mississippi, Open Door Baptist Church. Then, our National Church Growth Conference is right here in our church, September 18 to 21. And I would love for you to come and hear the preaching in the evening time at 7 p.m., there will be preaching in the morning and throughout the day and teaching sessions on every subject relating to the work of the local church. Everything from nursery workers training, security training, and then teaching about soul winning, teaching about Sunday school, teaching about the bus ministry, and all of the aspects of the local church. You're invited to come and be a part of that. On Monday evening at 7 p.m., Dr. Shelton Smith of the Sword of the Lord will be preaching. I'll be preaching on Monday evening. And each evening, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we will have a great crowd of folks. We'd love for you to come and be a part of this year's conference, the National Church Growth Conference, September 18 to 21. September 25th and 26th, I will be at the Mountain Lake Baptist Church uh, over in uh, Maryland. I don't have the town written down, and it's just outside of West Virginia there. Uh, I guess it is Mountain Lake, uh, but it's in that Maryland region there. And if you live in that region, I'd love for you to come and be a part of that. Pastor Dennis Leatherman is the, is the pastor there, and I'll be preaching with my good friend, uh, Dr. Shelton. Smith. Well, I trust uh, that uh, you've enjoyed the day, you've enjoyed the summer, looking forward to the fall time. Uh, we, we're glad, our family, we're happy to be back uh, recording our programs for every Saturday evening. Uh, we're glad to be with you. Uh, here's a good song uh, as we prepare for the message tonight, and you'll enjoy uh, the good singing this evening. Shame to stand and say that I love Jesus. I'm not ashamed to say I'm trusting in His word. I'm not ashamed to lift up high the blood stained banner because I'm saved. I'm not ashamed. We as Christians, we wait upon the shelf. Ashamed to lift our hands in praise, we wait on someone else. But when Jesus died at Calvary, God's plan He did fulfill. And that is why I stand today trying to do his will i'm not ashamed to stand and say that i love jesus i'm not ashamed to say i'm trusting in his word i'm not ashamed to lift up high the blood-stained banner because i'm saved I'm not ashamed In this life we have His blessings Yet we fail to praise His name He said if we are ashamed of Him To us He'd be the same when he gave his life on Calvary, he did it for all men. So that I can stand and proudly say, I've been born again. I'm not ashamed to stand and say that I love Jesus. I'm not ashamed to say I'm trusting in his word. I'm not ashamed to lift up high the blood-stained banner because I'm saved. I'm not ashamed because I'm saved. I'm not ashamed.
ashamed. I'm preaching tonight from the book of Joshua in chapter 11. It's interesting when you find stories like we find here in Joshua 11, and then we find a very similar story many hundreds of years later as recorded in the New Testament. Here we find Joshua is the successor of Moses, and the Bible is giving us description about the leadership and direction of their new leader, Joshua. Let me read a couple of verses to you in Joshua 11 and verse 15. As the Lord commanded Moses his servant, so did Moses command Joshua, and so did Joshua. He left nothing undone of all that the Lord commanded Moses. So Joshua took all that land, the hills and the south country, and all the land of Goshen, and the valley and the plain, and the mountain of Israel, and the valley of the same. It's very interesting as we read here that Joshua, he continues the leadership of the nation of Israel. As you know, it was Moses that led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt uh, through the wilderness. And then as they get to the land of Canaan, uh, there is a change of leadership. And Joshua leads the people across the Jericho into uh, the land of Canaan. Now what I want to preach about tonight is why I stay with the old time religion. It is so common that we give our loyalty and leadership to a man rather than the will of God. And there were those in this day that thought they were following Joshua's plan and opinion, but they weren't. According to this passage of Scripture, God told Moses his will, and he said, here's what I want you to do. Then Moses told Joshua what God told him, and the Bible says that Joshua did everything that Moses told him to do. Now, if you're not careful, we'll miss the fact that what Moses told Joshua to do is instruction that came from God. So often in our day, and it is referred to as a wokeness, there is a rebellion against the leadership, not only of this generation, but of the past generations. We foolishly have worked to remove the history of our nation. And we all know that some of our history is good and some of it is bad, but we learn from all of it. And we should never attack the leaders that gave us liberty from one generation to the next. But that's what wokeness does. It has invaded the church today to folks say, you can't tell me what to do. You have no business of telling me if I'm going to heaven or hell or if I'm a sinner or not. We have to understand that the message from men is not the message of men, but the message from the men of God is the message of God as recorded in the word of God. And so it's interesting to note that God tells Moses, Moses tells Joshua, and Joshua tells the people. Now I've decided tonight that not only am I thankful for the past generation that heralded and trumpeted in the truths of the word of God, I'm thankful that they did not preach their opinion and their personality, but they preached the word of God as God had given to them. And while I may mention a hero, and I'll never ignore those that taught me, while I may mention them, the reason I follow them is because of their preaching of the Word of God. I remember the day when young men wanted to follow the footsteps of their parents. And we have this rebellious and foolish generation, and I 
I don't know where it's coming from, whether it's coming from television or the internet or the educational system. Not much good comes out of any of those. I don't know where it comes from, but there is a rebellion instead of a, uh, of a respect and an admiration for the past generation. Folks, I've decided I'm going to stay with the old-time religion because that's what the Bible gives is the old-time religion. Now, I mentioned in the beginning that it's interesting to find a story in the Old Testament and then find one that's almost identical when you come to the New Testament. 2 Timothy chapter 3, we find Paul commissioning Timothy to do the same thing that he had done. In fact, he told Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and chapter 4 he told him I want you to continue the things not of my opinion and not of my plan but the things that have been given to me of the Lord Jesus I now give to you. Somehow we have this idea that if a man is a leader and he is a faulty leader, then we don't have to do anything that that man may say. Folks, can I tell you something tonight? I hold in my hand the word of God, the authority of God, and one day every man will be judged not by his opinion or peers, not by his own plans or desires, but he'll be judged by this wonderful, blessed old book that I hold in my hand. This needs to be the standard for our living today. This needs to be the standard for our lives, our marriage, our home, our family, our churches, and yea, even our nation again. I want to read some of these verses of 2 Timothy chapter 3 as Paul writes and says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. He goes on to describe, to define, and to explain what he means by those perilous times. And then he says, but you have known fully my doctrine, a manner of life, a purpose, a faith, a long suffering, a charity, a patience, of persecutions, of afflictions which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, in Lystra, what persecutions I endured. But out of them all the Lord delivered me. And then he says, now you know me, you know my character, but you know where I received the truth that I live and the truth that I preach. He said, Timothy, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Now he said, Timothy, he said, there's change in the air. And by the way, every generation changes. And I could walk through the generations, for example, of the 1920s were called the Roaring Twenties. The 1930s were marked by uh, the Great Depression. Uh, the 1940s were marked by World War II. The 1950s were marked by the Korean War. It was also marked by a return to church and the leadership of President Dwight D. Eisenhower encouraged people to get back to church. 1960s was a generation of rebellion. Uh, it was a rebellion of music like America had never heard before. Uh, the 1960s of the hippie movement going into the 1970s and the beginning of riots that we see full blown today. Uh, then the 1980s and the discos and on and on and on it goes. Uh, every generation changes. Ah, oh, but listen to me. Paul said in the midst of that change, here's what I want you to do. But continue thou in the things which thou hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Let's put the two stories together. In the beginning, we have Moses. God commands Moses. He leads the people. There's a change of leadership from Moses to Joshua. We don't change opinion. We don't change the pathway. Uh, we don't change the plan. We don't change the direction. For you see, it is not the will of Moses. It is not the will of Joshua. It is the will of God for the people to get into the land of Canaan and inherit that good 
good land that they may receive what God had prepared for them. You go all the way to the New Testament. Hundreds of years later, Paul tells Timothy, through all of this change that you're going to see, I want you to continue in the things that you have learned of me and the things that you have heard. And so I say today, it doesn't matter if the year is 1960, 1990, or 2023. We need to stay with the old time religion, not because it's what our fathers taught us, though I'm glad they did, not because of what the preachers of the past generation taught us, though I'm glad they did, but let's stick with the old time religion because that's what the Bible says. And so with that, I want to make this statement. I want to make this declaration. I'm going to keep on preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, the gospel is the need of the nation. There's only one way to heaven. Jesus said in John chapter 14 and verse number 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life and no man cometh unto the Father but by me and Jesus is the way he is not a way he is not one of the ways he is the only way to heaven for you see it was Jesus that died on the cross it was Jesus that was buried it was Jesus that rose again from the grave no one else has ever done that there's no way to heaven other than uh, through the name through the person uh, through the work of the Lord Jesus Christ Paul wrote to the church at Corinth in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and he said, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep of all that which I have received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. We don't need a different gospel preached today that, and, than that is recorded in the Word of God. You don't go to heaven by baptism. Old Dr. Lakin used to say in the days when they were baptizing in the creeks and rivers, he said you can be baptized in every creek, river, and mud hole till the tadpoles are familiar with your social security number and you'll die and go to hell unless uh, you're born again. Oh, I believe in baptism. I believe baptism is a public profession of our faith in Christ, but it's not salvation. Why it's putting the ring on a man that has exchanged vows with his wife. They're already married but as a testimony he puts on the ring. She puts on the ring to let others know I'm proud. I'm glad uh, to be married uh, to this man, uh, to uh, this woman and that's what baptism is. I believe in it. Oh but salvation is not through baptism. Salvation is not through joining the church. Salvation is not by penance. Salvation is not by being a part of a club or a group or an organization. An old preacher friend of mine who's in heaven now used to tell the story. He was witnessing to a lady and she said, well, I believe there are many ways to heaven. For example, if I was going to go to Chicago, she said, I could take the interstate. I could take a secondary highway. I could take a country road. I could take a scenic highway. What do you think about that? He said, I think you're right. And that's true. Ah, oh, but he said, when I die, I'm not, doing, I'm not going to Chicago. Chicago. I'm going to heaven and there's only one way to heaven and that's through the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad that Jesus shed his blood on the cross of Calvary and he died to pay for our sin that we could have eternal life. The rich died for the poor. The just died for the unjust. I'm telling you friend I'm going to stick with the old time gospel. I'm going to stick with the old time way of preaching the word of God. I wish I had another hour to preach but I'll tell you in close I believe there's a literal heaven and a literal hell. Those that die without trusting Christ as Savior as the rich man opened his eyes in hell and he lifted up his eyes and he was in torments and so everyone who dies without Christ goes to a little literal hell and those who die by faith in Christ with their faith in Christ they go to the eternal glories and wonderful place called heaven. Let's decide tonight we're going to stay with the old time religion. Thank Thanks for watching the program. Here's a great song as we go off the air. When the sea is raging and waves are crashing round 
When my heart is heavy and I'm swiftly going down, help me to remember however of the sea that underneath the current your arms are holding me. In your arms you cradle me and make me feel secure. In your arms you're showing me your mercy will endure. In your arms you're lifting me above the troubled sea. I'll be safe because I know your arms are holding me. When the storm has ceased to raging, the sun will still remain. So until the shadows vanish, your power will sustain. For it's there that I find refuge, where I'll be safe from harm. No storms can overtake me in the shelter of your arm. In your arms. feel secure in your arms you're showing me your mercy will endure in your arms you're lifting me above the troubled sea I'll be safe because I know your arms are holding me I'll be safe because I know 